fear for the Lord. I can't turn down. Talking too much bread. Time for you to learn now. Up to what they hear and yeah. get offended by yeah. the word now. There's more men here, so I'm gonna deal with y'all first, right? What is a what is a woman's garment that y'all want to be caught dead in? Especially not you. Is that your girlfriend? That's my wife. It's your, it's your wife. Perfect. Now, if she came home and you had on her on a certain article of her clothing, how would she look at you? What articles of clothing do you think she would look at you crazy wearing? A bra, maybe. What else? Her dresses. Ah, okay. So if she comes to the house and he's in her dress, he's going to look crazy, right? She's going to be like, something's wrong. My husband done broke mentally. You understand what I'm saying to you? That's what's going to happen. So God said a man was not to put on women's clothing. Everybody on the same page. So a dress is women's clothing. Everybody on the same page. With me? Okay, let's read it from the time now. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Listen to this. Neither shall a man, a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. Now what do women wear, my sisters, that pertain unto men? Wait, I said again. What do women wear that pertain unto men? See, it's always easy for the men to get it. But the women are kind of like, I don't know. What is he talking about? If a dress is women's clothing, what is men's clothing? Shoes, what else? A suit, okay. Ah, what else? When you try to go to the bathroom, what's on the sign, sisters? What's on the sign? How do you know you're not going into the boys' bathroom? Bring it out! What's on the sign? It says, man, oh, all right, all right, all right. What does the picture have in it? My goodness, my people. Huh? He has on pants. He has on pants. He has on pants. You follow what I'm saying? When did you, when did you all start wearing pants? Don't run away, Jameson. You got to hear this, too. Where, when did you all start wearing pants? Do you know? Forever. That's what we think, right? So let's look at this picture. Come in. Come close. Right? Look right here. On the bottom of this, right, what's going on? What does the women have on? They have on a dress, right? Let me show you another one. Watch this, watch this. So that's when you all were in your native culture. Right here, right? So-called blacks were put into slavery, right? What are they wearing in the fields? Huh? What are they wearing down there? So they're working in what? Why do they don't got on pants? Hmm? We ever thought about that? Okay, we're going to read the scripture again. Watch this. Because they knew what was up, right? Let's read it again. Watch. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So God said, anybody who cross dresses is an abomination. What's an abomination? Something dislikable, something that God hates right. or detests. Right. So God set up order right then and there because coming out of Egypt the men would wear these long garments right and they were closed up and they look like dresses and they would have nothing on underneath so when they stood up on the altar you could see everything hanging right I don't want to go too descriptive but you get what I'm saying so God said the men need to put on pants so he ordained pants then and there but the women he never changed their dress code they could wear dresses just like they were wearing you follow what I'm saying but now today something has happened in our community the women wear the same thing as the men so you, you're married, right? So I'm going to kind of put you on the spot. The man wears the what in the family? Why not the dress? See? That's the woman. Hold on, say it on the mic. That's the what? Woman's. Ah. We know that, but we don't consider that. Our sisters don't consider that. They say things like pants are comfortable, right? They're comfortable, right? But you got to realize, remember what I told you earlier. The reason we're in this position is because we broke God's commandments. The reason we call ourselves Mexicans and don't know who we are is because we don't do what God asks us to do. So now they've given you something that breaks God's commandments and you wear it and say it's comfortable. Bring it is that wrong to do or right to do? Bring it huh? It's wrong to do. You see what I'm saying? It's wrong to do. And it's one of the reasons we have disorder in our community. That's why I ask you, should a, should a woman go to the door when somebody's trying to rob the house? Why not? Because the man wears the pants of the family, right? So there was order set up, even in how we dressed. But now because the woman looks like the man, she behaves like the man. Give me Romans 7 and 14. She behaves like a man, right? And I can tell my sister right here, these, these wonderful sisters never get mad. They never argue. His life is perfect, right? But what we got to see is it destroyed a lot of women in our community. Tight pants have made a lot of baby mamas. 
it's made a lot of aggressive women because the way that women behave themselves or the way that men behave themselves changes with what they have on. Like if you had a dress on right now and the wind is blowing, would you be able to stand up there like a man? Nah, you would be covering it, right? If they had dresses on, they'd be covering it. They'd be like, man, the wind is blowing. They would, ha they would have to behave themselves differently. Sis wouldn't have her arms crossed like she about to box me. You know what I'm saying? She wouldn't be doing that. She would be like, damn, this dress is blowing. Let me, let me hold myself together, right? It would be a whole different spirit on them. Look at what the Bible said, Romans 7, 14. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The book of the Bible is a spiritual book. You have to do what's written in the Bible, and you see benefits from it. You understand? So wearing pants, it puts a spirit on the women. Wearing dresses, it puts a spirit on the men. So now in a lot of marriages, how many, what percent of marriages is divorce? 50%. See, I'm married as well, so we know that. 50% of marriage is divorce, right? And you example to this brother and to this brother and to this brother, hopefully, you married? Used to be, oh man, see what I'm saying? We gotta deal with it, you know what I'm saying? We gotta deal with it. And it was probably because this what we're reading, where it was disorder, the man wasn't doing his role, the woman wasn't doing her role, and they couldn't get on the same page. The Bible says that spiritually, this book does something. So what a woman wears changes her mind. We may not think that, but when they wear fashion, what do they say it does to you? You do what? You express what? Yourself, right? So somebody who wears fashion expresses to you what's in their head. When I see women in pants, it expresses to me they've been indoctrinated by this America. Right. Because this didn't start to the 1800s. That's, right. That's what it expresses to me. Women may feel like it's freedom, right? And it's what I'm supposed to be doing. But God says spiritually it destroys you. Right. Read again from the top. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am cardinal, sold under sin. Uh -huh. So the law is spiritual, and it will change the order in your communities if you apply it. But many of us, we don't apply it. Many of our women are still in pants. So if you're the man of the house, right, and you really are, if the house is in order the way it's supposed to be, then you're supposed to have more pants and she's supposed to wear dresses. You understand? In your marriage, or, and sis, I'm going to ask you this too because you were married. In a marriage, who's in charge? The man? You agree? No, no, no. You don't answer me. Who's in charge of the marriage? I feel like it's both. Huh? It's both of us. It's both of us. Is that what God says? Bring it out. Bring it out. I'm just asking. I'm asking. Is that what God said? When you have a marriage, right? Who is it between? I'm not. No. See, that's wrong. Three people. Who are the three people? Help me out. Yeah. Yeah. Man, woman, and God. That's what marriage is between because the commandment of marriage was only found in the Bible for the Israelites. Everywhere else that has a marriage, every other culture that has marriages, is copying off your book. Right. You understand what I'm saying to you? So when God gave you the commandment of marriage, he said, I need to be involved in that thing. Right. And he gave an order that the way, the, of the way the marriage was supposed to work. Give me 1 Corinthians. Why? Right. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So you young men, listen up to this, right? The head of every who? Of every man is Christ. So the order was Christ and then man. So man was supposed to follow after Christ's example. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. Is the who? Is the man. So the woman is supposed to listen to who? The man. But the man is supposed to be following whose example? Right. So the man wasn't allowed to do whatever he wanted and abuse his woman and violate. He was supposed to go into this book and follow after Christ's example and be that for his household. And I'm going to show you today. Show you that in the Bible. That's how marriage is supposed to be set up. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. So the order in our community is God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order. And under the woman was the children. Right. You understand? That's how marriage is supposed to work. So in your house, you are supposed to be dictating what happens according to the Bible. I'm going to read to you Ephesians 5. Marriage is just a representation of Christ and the church. Right. That's what we don't know. So I was dealing with y'all earlier, right, about dealing with multiple women and things like that. That's why you're not supposed to deal with multiple women. How many Christ are there? So how come we don't have multiple? You know why? Because we were only supposed to be connected to one as men. Right. That's why a woman's only supposed to deal with one man. You follow what I'm saying? But what we have in our community is you deal with multiple women. He might grow up deal with multiple women. He might deal with multiple women. She deal with multiple men. And then we say, let's make it work. But God never ordained that. He never ordained boyfriend and girlfriend. You were supposed to deal with one woman or one man your entire life, just like we deal with one Christ as men. You understand? Ephesians 5, where it says, uh, yep, start there. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Why? Submit yourselves unto your own husband. Hey, listen to this, Oscar. Why? Submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh -huh. as unto the Lord. So 
When we submit ourselves to the Lord, do we get to give our opinion? Bring it up. Do we get to do what we want to do? Teach. Read it again. Watch. Watch. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So that's what's supposed to happen when, when your marriage is between God, woman, and Christ. I mean, between you two and God. That's what's supposed to be happening. And that's why your marriage failed. I'll be honest with you, right? Marriages fail because we don't understand order. So you all are in the house arguing like you have equal say in what's supposed to be going on. But prior to getting into marriage, you're supposed to know there's an order in this thing. As long as he's following what Christ says to do, I'm supposed to follow him. That's what's supposed to happen. That's marriage. So why is it supposed to submit themselves unto their husband as unto the Lord? Right? You follow what I'm saying? So that's for you to deal with. Because if you say your marriage is between you two and God, that's for you to establish. God will hold you accountable for not doing that. Watch. We're going to keep reading. Watch. For the husband is the head of the wife. He says it again. You see? It's, it's there twice. This is the New Testament, too. People say, that's old, right? That doesn't, that's not for this time. Well, this is the New Testament. He's telling you right. that the husband, the, the wife is supposed to submit to the husband. Right. That's what's supposed to happen. Go ahead. Even as Christ is the head of the church, uh -huh. and he is the savior of the body, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, because this is what marriage represents. Go ahead. So let the wives be to their own husbands uh -huh. in everything. And what? In everything. But I want to have my own opinion. In everything. But I want to do what I think is right. I should have 50-50 marriages. In everything. That's marriage. You see what I'm saying? That's marriage, but that's not taught in our community. That's why he grew up without, uh, without his dad. That's why she grew up without her dad. That's why he grew up without his dad. Did you grow up with your dad? You, that's, you did have your dad. Okay, thank you. All right, all right, we two. What about you? Okay, we 50% we, we now. All right? Three out of six people. You know what I'm saying? That's terrible. Because it takes a dad to create a situation. But in order for the dad to stay, there has to be order. I'm not saying he's right for leaving. But part of the reason we leave is because we don't understand. Our, our man is trying to be a man and wear the pants in his family. And his wife is trying to be the man too. And that creates friction in a marriage. You understand? Go ahead. Right. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. Now that's important, right? Just like Christ loved the church and dealt with them and had mercy on them, that's what a husband is to do. So I'm not telling you this to tell you to go home now and see everything you tell her, you about to scream at her for right. This is what the Bible said. You heard that, brother. Now that's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you there was an order things worked in. She can give you her opinion. You don't have to take it. You understand? Because that's what God said it was supposed to be. If you say this is the decision, that's what was supposed to happen. Because if we give, if we pray to God and ask for something, and God gives us the complete opposite, do we have any say-so? No, we just got to go with what God gave us. Right? Go ahead. And gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So this Bible was to change us. Just like a husband's job is to change his wife's mind. You're supposed to have her submit to the commandments, my bad, and you're supposed to submit to the commandments as well. That's what's supposed to be happening. You follow what I'm saying? So in order for us to change as a community, it starts with strong marriages. It starts with you two following what the Bible actually says. And then if we follow that, we'll change the community because you'll have kids and the kids will teach what? Will your, will your daughter have multiple boyfriends? Why not? You would teach her properly. You follow what I'm saying? That's why he's dealt with multiple women because his dad never taught him properly. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.